Welcome to a quick tutorial on how to download and access your files from Tradebit. This tutorial assumes that you're using a Windows-based personal computer. If you're using a Macintosh, most of this will work the same way for you. Sometimes clicking with your mouse in a certain way might be different. If that's the case, you'll need to inquire about technical differences in regards to a Mac from your local technical support. We don't do technical support for systems per se. Um, or you're welcome to ask in our Yahoo group uh, how other Mac users are accessing these files. Or you can contact Tradebit directly. So we're going to proceed with the understanding that you're using Windows on a personal computer. Also, if you're using Vista, in some cases, some of the settings that you might be using may block downloads, so you may not be able to actually place files wherever you'd like. Um, you'll notice here for our tutorial we're using XP, um, and so this is for XP uh, Windows-based systems, and also covers Vista. Most Vista users will be okay with this, but if you try to download something and it won't let you, it usually means that there's a setting issue. So the first thing to do, once you've made your purchase, is to go into your Yahoo or other email inbox. In this case, we're using Yahoo. I've sent a small kit to myself, uh, just to use as an example. And so the basic steps that you're about to see, just assume that it's essentially the same thing. In your inbox, you'll see an email arrive. It'll be from Tradebit system. The subject will be custom Tradebit access code. Just click on this. You'll see an email with a hyperlink, a website URL, and also an access PIN code. What you want to do is you want to memorize that PIN code and click on your access link here. You'll see the Tradebit page appear. It will show you the email address that you're using to access. And then it will have a little text field for you to enter your access PIN code in. Click in this box. Type your PIN code, which in this case is 7979. Come down to the search button. Click. Now you'll notice the Tradebit page for access and downloading appears. There's instructions on the page that can also step you through everything that we're showing you on the video. There's links at the top if you have download problems, etc. If you've bought a collection of frequencies, then these will appear in the page, similar to what you see here. So th these are the frequency names. And then on the right hand side, we have download and access options. If you have Java installed on your computer and you know how to use it, you can use th this Start Bulk Download feature, which means basically you could click on that and it would download all of your files sequentially to your system. I do not recommend this function for most of our users, um, especially if you're using a, s a slower computer or if you have um, slow internet access or you're not really familiar with your computer. Um, what can happen is if you have a slower computer or slower internet access, this can just be a little bit buggy. It might not work well for our purposes. The reason for that is just that um, if you've bought a large number of files, the size of the transmission over time can make this unreliable. In most cases, if you're buying say three frequencies or more at a time, um, it's best to just do the start single download option. And that's what we have here. So you'll notice that on the right hand side are a bunch of check marks. Don't worry about those. On the left hand side are the names. Don't click on these unless you want to read a description of them, which is fine. What you really want to do is you want to do use the start single download option. Place your mouse on top of the Start Single Download, right click with your mouse, choose Save Target As, click 
click on that and then you'll see a download box appear. Now Tradebit for some reason has given a bunch of prefix codes that they've assigned to our file names. We don't know why they've done this. Um, it's not part of our you know, classification system. What we recommend is you highlight this and you delete it. So just highlight it with your mouse and tap the delete key. All you really want is this here. That's the file name. Here this little drop down box shows your computer, the local drives. I usually recommend to people that they save to their desktop. It really depends on what you want. You can create a new folder if you'd like in the desktop. You can just right click, go new, choose folder. I'm going to type in the word sounds and then enter and then I'm going to double click on that and that file will now save there. I'm going to click save. Now if that happens, just try it again. It's usually like a timeout error. And you can see now that it's downloading. That little glitch that we saw before there, don't despair. Sometimes it'll happen. You just have to try it again. Um, there's a couple of small little glitches that will appear. In our case, I just took a little bit too long, and it's like a security feature that's built in. I'm trying to download the file, but I'm pausing long enough to describe what I'm doing. So the system senses it, and it just asks me to redo it, basically. So now you can see here, estimated time left, is showing how much of the file is downloaded. Now keep in mind, you can see here, that the size of the file is 25 megs. It's a fairly large file for a sound file. Most sound files are around 3 to 5 megs, but in our case the coding and information on each frequency track is very complex and usually quite high in resolution, so we have rather unusual sound files. There's an awful lot of information in them, so it takes a bit longer to download. So you'll just see that it's counting up. Eventually it'll get to 25 and it will say download is finished and you'll just click OK and then you'll just go back and you'll keep doing that all the way down. Now if you're using Vista and you have security settings uh, set up it may not let you download to the location that you've selected. You'll have to choose a different folder um, and if, if it starts getting kind of complex and you don't know where to save it this is a situation where you need to find out about your particular computer where on your system you're allowed to save things and if you don't know, the best thing to do is ask for local technical support. And you can also get support, um, you should be able to get support from other Vista users on our Yahoo group. And if you're using a Macintosh, everything that you've just seen should be essentially the same thing, but some of your mouse clicking may be a little bit different. And if that's the case, again, what you should do is uh, consult your local Macintosh technical support. Or what you can do is go on to our Yahoo group, the main group, Sound of Stars. Um, and they'll be able to uh, help you. We've had the, a, a number of Mac users that have reported that they've gone in and they had a little bit of difficulty clicking on things, but it was usually a very, very small, very simple, easily resolved tweaking issue. And in that case, they figured out the problem. So chances are there's a good supply of Mac users on our Yahoo group that will know immediately what it is that you want to do and how to fix the situation. Um, usually in most cases, if you, if you buy a collection of frequencies, you have one year to access and download your files. And if in some cases the expiry for access is less than that, sometimes it is, sometimes it'll be like three days. And if it's three days and it expires and you haven't gotten all your, your files, don't worry about it. You can just contact me or anyone on our group, let us know, and so we can reissue you your access. Now, I've downloaded my files, as you can see here. It took 2 minutes and 55 seconds to do the one file. So I'm going to close this. Now, note, each of these files you can usually download about 8 times each, but they're only meant for personal use. You're welcome to download it to your computer. Um, you're also allowed to burn a track to a CD for your own personal use on your home stereos but we don't give permission for redistribution freely to
to other people or for use other than yourself or you know I mean obviously you can play it at home for your family and, and that kind of thing but you know if the neighbors come over and they want copies of it then we don't uh, give license for that so there you go you can access all of the files that way again it's really really easy you just right click and then go through the process that we outlined and I hope that helps have a great day